Dennis Cheng here. Welcome to another video. It's the last video of the year. I'm here in Fukuoka, which is a city in the west coast of Japan. It's really amazing here. There is no gypsy jazz, but uh, the straight ahead jazz musicians are really, really good. Anyway, uh, this video is coming out a little bit earlier, just before the end of the year, because I want to let you know that the sale on DC Music School is still going on. The end of year sale, and it will go on for a few more days after the after the new year. So you can take advantage of the mega sale. Lots of uh, amazing releases this year. I'm really happy to have worked with all these great players. Dan Wilson, Cecil Alexander, Jimmy Bruno. We haven't released that yet. Um, Martin van Ederson, Sylvain Luc Birelli, and lots of great musicians. So yeah, DC Music School. And just last week, I released my uh, book on gypsy jazz picking. You'll find all the links in the description box. And I want to talk some more about picking. Originally, I wanted to talk about music business, but I'll save that video for another time. I just felt that now is to get some more momentum on that Gypsy Jazz Picking book that I wrote. Um, I could talk a little bit more about picking. Namely, about what people call the George Benson technique, which is a technique that I actually learned during the pandemic. And I'll tell you the whole story in a second. The reason I want to talk about this is because this year I got to work with Cecil Alexander and uh, Dan Wilson, who both use this quote unquote so called Benson picking technique, George Benson picking, GB picking. That is the name of this technique. And when you play gypsy jazz, the name of the technique is gypsy picking. So there are a few things I want to talk about, a few things to unpack. The whole thing about normalization or standardization which I think standardization has a lot, a lot, a lot of advantages, probably more so than disadvantages, really. And thanks to standardization, I think overall the level has gone up around the world. But on the other side of the coin, standardization has led to a lot of misunderstanding. And um, that's kind of what I want to talk about here. The term gypsy picking, um, that came from a book by written by Michael Horowitz, as most of you gypsy jazz players know, which is it's a great book, you know, it's the first book of its kind to to describe this technique. But it's a, it's a, it's a short book, it's a small book, and it's the first of its kind. And in the past 20 years, no one else has written any other book except for me. <laughs> And uh, my book really goes in detail. I left no stone uncovered. And I explained the history behind the technique, all the mechanics and why we do what we do when we play this style. But the thing about standardization, now we call it gypsy picking, which has led many, many people to believe that this was invented by Django Reinhardt, when in fact it was not. About 100 years ago, this so-called gypsy picking technique was called picking technique, just picking. That was just the way most guitar players played. So and that got me thinking about this whole George Benson thing. We call it George Benson because on the internet you go, you type George Benson picking on Google or YouTube, and you find lots of videos, people talking about George Benson picking technique. And it, hadn't, it, hadn't, it had not crossed my mind that, hey, maybe George Benson didn't invent this. I don't know. And that's why I'm making this video. This is not a teaching video. It's more of a philosophical video. And I'm hoping that I don't know who's going to watch this video, but someone with more knowledge or anecdotes can share their thoughts because I, re I would really like to know, sincerely like to know the history behind all this. It occurred to me that maybe George Benson didn't invent this technique. And that's something that I started thinking about when I was working with Dan Wilson in, in November. He was just telling me that in the African-American church that he grew up in, every single guitar player used that technique. All the old guitar players, some of them maybe even the same age as George Benson or maybe older, same generation. 
and maybe that's actually where it started because it is true also in the past few years when i've been like researching in my free time this so-called george benson technique or just watching videos of a lot of african-american guitar players especially in the gospel movement i did notice that they use that technique and i was wondering are they copying george benson what's what's the history behind that the same way most gypsies use the quote-unquote gypsy picking technique and since i'm very familiar with uh, the gypsy side of things the gypsy picking technique uh, i started thinking about certain things namely the fact that a lot of gypsies are not taught picking technique in the same way that other students might learn it like you know put, put put your hand like this attack at the 90 degree angle or whatever angle blah 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 gypsies for the most part learn technique on their own but the one advantage they have is that they're surrounded by so many musicians who use variations of the same technique and i started wondering if that might be the actual case with african american guitar players in the church uh, scene the gospel scene um i know that cecil alexander told me that he just quote unquote picked that way naturally just it was always how it, it was it wasn't if i'm not mistaken he said it wasn't necessarily a george benson influence but then he did notice that george himself played that way dan wilson told me that it didn't come from george benson that it came from his his church environment but then of course everyone then refers still refers to it as a george benson picking technique, probably because he's the most famous one and probably as dan says the one who took it to to its top level so yeah coming back to the whole gypsy thing a lot of gypsy players ha have no idea exactly what they're doing they're just doing it naturally because as i s talked about in previous videos most musicians aren't really working on technique per se they're working on lines vocabulary a, a particular style and then the technique is then they adapt their technique to the style that they're playing and because a lot of these gypsies are growing up with other musicians who are already using that technique they i guess subconsciously notice that maybe they have they should have their hand in this way or that way but actually if if you read my book <laughs> you'll see that there's actually there are quite a few variations to this technique which i describe in the book because no one is taught in a standardized way everyone comes up with their own intricacies or their own nuances i also mention in the book that some players have their own um ticks habits that are not always the most efficient but because they never give it given much thought and they always played that way they managed to bring some of this inefficient mechanics to a, such a high level that it makes no difference whether it's inefficient or efficient so like for example uh brady finderstein he has this pattern um i could be a little bit wrong but it's something like goes like this now if you use traditional gypsy jazz picking it will be down up down down but he does down up up down or down up down up something like that something weird like that and it's something that i caught when i worked with him and um, it's an awkward movement but he manages to make it work stoklo had no idea that you could use upstrokes until much later in life and so he developed a technique that is based on a lot of downstrokes he does so many consecutive downstrokes um and he managed to do it so fast it's ridiculous just because he had no idea you could use upstrokes and he hasn't changed his technique since so these are things to to consider and i would assume that in this african-american guitar the church community a lot of these players are learning more or less the same way subconsciously on their own and just watching their environment so i want to talk to you about how i learned this uh quote unquote george benson technique for lack of a better term it started uh shortly before the summer of 2020 i was reading in a wikipedia article about george benson and in that article someone had written that george benson is using gypsy picking and 
and I said to myself, wait, that, that doesn't make sense. He's not using gypsy picking. I mean, how do you define gypsy picking? But there, it's defined as the use of rest strokes, starting new string with down strokes or things like that. And I wrote a post on Facebook about this, kind of like a tongue-in-cheek post. And some of uh, a prominent teacher's students, you know, teacher's pets, and so some of these teacher's pets <laughs> would go to their teacher and say, Dear leader, there is someone committing blasphemy against our eternal Lord and Master. Please do something about this. So this person showed up and started attacking me. So you don't know what you're talking about. You don't even use this technique. It's the same thing as Gypsy Jazz speaking. How can you say that? And, and I thought about it. That person had a really, really good point. It's true. I don't use this George Benson technique. So, in some ways, um, that person did have a point. It's always better when you're, you have a better idea when you're actually doing that thing. But that, on the flip side of that coin, that person attacking me says I don't know anything about the George Benson picking technique. But that person is making the claim, probably the person who wrote the Wikipedia article, but he's making the claim that the George Benson picking technique is the same as the Gypsy Jazz picking technique. And that person knows nothing about Gypsy Jazz picking technique. So can I not use the same argument against this person? You know? But that got me super curious. So one, so I just started learning the technique. I went on YouTube. I contacted teachers. I had this teacher, uh, JC Styles from Australia, a guitar player um, who was uh, very prominent in New York from Australia and who apparently hung out a lot with George Benson. I took lessons with him, actually two to be precise. I took one lesson where he showed me, you know, the mechanics and everything. And I practiced for one week and I took a second lesson just to see if I was still doing things right. And he said, yeah, you're doing things right. Just keep practicing that way and that's it. So since the summer of 2020, I've been using this quote unquote George Benson technique on top of this gypsy jazz picking technique. So I, I'd like to think that I kind of know what I'm talking about now. And then working with Dan Wilson and Cecil Alexander this year, they actually repeated certain things that were said in that um, Wikipedia article, namely that they use a lot of rest strokes. Uh, and to be precise, they're using rest strokes on downstrokes. So that's, that is starting to look a lot like gypsy jazz picking. So I, I started thinking a little bit about this. And, you know, the thing about standardization, about labeling, is that it's a double-edged sword. As I said, there's, there are lots of advantages, but when you zoom in, it becomes more difficult to define because of all these uh, variables, all these ex exceptions that may exist. Like, how do you exactly define what is gypsy picking? How do you exactly define what is George Benson technique? Is George Benson technique the, the technique that like 100% that George Benson uses? Is gypsy picking technique the technique that Django uses? Or is it the one that Stokely uses? Because Stokely uses way more downstrokes than Django did. They don't have necessarily the exact same right hand positions either. So, when you like zoom in, you have all these variables and these nuances that become very difficult to define. Now, if we were to define the George Benson technique in such, like, if we were just to say it's a technique where you have, it's a floating hand technique, just like Gypsy Jazz, but you tilt the pick in such a way that instead of uh, attacking, now my uh, pick is parallel to the string, now instead of angling it this way, you angle it the other way. And if, let's say, let's say that's the basic criteria for George Benson picking technique. And let's define gypsy jazz picking technique as also a floating hand technique where you angle your um, wrist kind of like this and you attack in kind of a diagonal plane, which I talk about in the book, in such a way that whenever you do a downstroke, whether you're picking hard or softly, 
it automatically ends up being a rest stroke. I, I don't even try to do a rest stroke, as I said in the, in the book and previous videos. Just because of my hand position, no matter how I try, it just ends up being a rest stroke. It would be so much harder. Let me see. I would have to like force myself to do a free stroke. I would have to change the plane of attack. But if I, if I just use the natural mechanics, it always ends up being a rest stroke. Now let's go back to this George Benson technique. Um, the way I personally use it, again, following my parameters, it's a floating hand technique and I tilt my pick backwards. If I were to do a downstroke, see it's a rest stroke. But if I wanted to, I could also do a rest stroke. I can do a rest stroke with this technique as well, but it requires a little bit more of a conscious effort. Then I watched Dan Wilson's technique, and I know that his, the angle of his hand is a little bit, uh, is different from mine. Mine is not too angled. His may be more like this. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to watch this video again. But let me just see. Now, because of the, 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 this angle, it's true that when I do a downstroke, it is a rest stroke. It's automatically a rest stroke. So it boils down to the angle that you use and therefore how it affects the plane of attack. However, this too wide of an angle doesn't work for me. I prefer more like this. This works for me. Conversely, there are gypsy players who don't use quote unquote the traditional angle. Some of them have a straighter straighter wrists than others and therefore they're able to incorporate upstrokes as well. So you have all these nuances that are very very interesting. So yeah that's what I wanted to talk about these. It's a philosophical topic but I'm interested in these things. Hopefully some of you are as well and you can maybe point me in the right direction. Maybe hopefully one day if I have the means I'd like to interview all these people who use this technique and talk about where they learned it from. Especially those from the African American church communities. It seems based on certain things that I read on the internet that actually I read two different accounts of how George Benson learned it. So I don't even know which one's true. But George mentioned that he learned it by accident one day in the car. He was cramped up so that he just changed his picking technique and just ended up being that way. I don't know what's true. Um, but yes, fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> So basically I have these two techniques in my arsenal. Let me just show you the, the difference in sound um, if I use the same line. So here's a gypsy jazz line. If I use a gypsy jazz picking technique. Well I don't use the same pick when I play gypsy jazz but let's just use this one. I'm hoping that this video can reach a lot of people. If you could share, leave a comment, subscribe, it would make a huge difference. I want to reach a lot, as many people as possible just so that I could, some someone out there has some sort of anecdote that they could share with me and you know help me with my research. Anyway, I'm going to an all-night jam session in 20 minutes. So happy new year and see you next year. I do want to share one last story about this standardization slash normalization thing. When I was a kid, I remember this uh, incident, um, I was maybe like seven, eight years old. Uh, we were in school in the cafeteria and uh, they were serving nuggets or something like that. Yeah, it was, it was somewhere, they were serving nuggets and I was a kid. And I remember this other kid suddenly exclaimed, whoa, they have McNuggets. And we said that in French because in Montreal we speak French. McCoquette as they say in Montreal. I don't know how they say it in France. Maybe they say nuggets, make nuggets. Anyway, the kid said make nuggets, and uh, the chef or whatever was so pissed off. I was like, these are not make nuggets. They're called nuggets. So you see, growing up, we hear make nuggets all the time because of the power of uh, of advertising. That we we just automatically call them 
McNuggets. What people call fried chicken, they call them Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> so it's the same thing, you know. This gypsy just thinking, oh, you're using gypsy picking? Oh, you're using uh, George Benzamin. So in our head, it kind of like influences us. We, we don't really question things and we start to think, oh, maybe McDonald's invented nuggets. Uh, the Colonel invented Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, Django invented gypsy picking and George Benson invented George Benson picking. So food for thought. Check out my book. <laughs>